there's a groove like that, everybody feels good. Of RPOE, I'm here with Nathan from DJI. Nathan, DJI are well known for their drones. Tell me about some of the applications of these drones and how they're used. Okay, yeah, so this is the DJI Enterprise range of drones. We have the smaller uh, Mavic 3s over here, and then we've got the M30 here, and the Matrice 350 over here. There's also a Dock 2, and these are used in a variety of different environments for the public sector, geospatial mapping, things like that. Uh, so there are specific drones that will work better in certain scenarios, i.e. if you want to do some small mapping in an area and you want to have something that's in a sort of small payloads, then you've got your Mavics, which are the smaller drones there. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more waterproof, a little bit more uh, durable with wind, high wind speeds and conditions like that, with a larger payload that can do a few different other things, maybe higher quality video, higher quality surveying, therefore you're more accurate, then you might go with something like the M30. And if you need high accuracy with different types of payloads, you've got the Matrice 350 over here. So one of the payloads we have is the P1 over there, which is a full frame sensor camera. And that can create really accurate uh, data, essentially. So if you run all the elements correctly, you can actually achieve centimeter accuracy for you know, mapping structures or anything like this. And it means that you can recreate a you know, a building or a 2D, 3D structure and use that to analyze certain elements. So, for example, the Everton, their stadium uh, had use of utilizing use of many of these drones to actually help create that stadium to monitor the progress and things like that. The public sector will use them. So we have quite a lot of floods in the UK and sometimes there might be issues where you might have to locate people or find things. Sending up a helicopter might not be the most efficient option. Using one of the thermal cameras that we can see that's being used on there, we can identify where people are and we can get and help people quickly. There are third party payloads that can be attached to them, such as searchlights, such as uh, speaker systems, uh, even infrared or night vision. And these can allow you to locate where people are. We can be used in uh, forestry environments to identify the wildlife you can use something called an l2 payload which attaches to this larger drone over here and that can penetrate vegetation and we can understand the surrounding terrain and where that's hugely beneficial again is let's say we've had some landslides or something like that and there's we need to get a search and rescue team up there our normal path might be obstructed we can send a drone analyze the area use maybe the L2 to analyze if there's an alternative path to get to the people or a safer option to get around these things. So they can be used in a variety of different environments in that sort of area. And, and let me ask you about the image quality. What kind of image quality can you expect from some of these devices? So the smaller drones with the smaller payloads, you, I, I mean, it's still really high quality. You have a, a, a micro four thirds sensor in in the in the wide angle camera on them, and then a, a half inch sensor, I believe it was, in the zoom camera. And then the thermal one has slightly different cameras. When we move up to this, we have a micro four thirds sensor camera in here with the thermal imaging and a few other elements in there. And then when we move up to the Matrice 350, which is the large one, which has payloads that just be, can be removed and chopped and changed between what is required. The, you have a full frame sensor on the P1, so as you, and that's got interchangeable lenses as well, so you can achieve really high accuracy uh, images and you know super high quality, which then means obviously for when you're creating a 2D or 3D construction, it's really precise, really high quality. And what's the typical learning curve of being able to control some of these? So the actual drones, um, they're not too dissimilar to actually fly than the commercial side of the drones. However, operating the payloads is a little bit different, okay? There is also other elements that come into play. So there's uh, like DJI Pilot 2, Flight Hub, things like this that allow you to map a mission, which then in turn, you do not really have to fly the drone. You send it up, implement that mapping or that uh, whichever sort of uh, route, yes, you've selected 
and then you can allow the drone to actually go and do it itself essentially and then it'll you know it'll do the map create that and then you, you just essentially land it now you can take it out of these modes into a full auto mode but you will need to go and achieve a gvc license of course, yeah. to actually fly one of these but that will literally take off all the assists and uh it's you flying solo but with the assists on it's it's relatively easy to handle typically in terms of um, you know, you, you kind of outlined, you know, especially in terms of architecture and, uh, and some of the different applications that's used. It, within the context of, uh, let's say, smaller businesses, do you see any uptake from that for smaller businesses that, that utilize drones for different applications? I think the Mavic 3 enterprise level drones has use in more or less any scenario. Um, any time you need to have any inspections, any uh deliverables any mapping or anything that requires something that would take time doing it manually through photography they are useful yeah. and they and they create really high quality map like models as well through through that softwares of terror and things like that so yeah i mean for example roofing industry you know sending one of these up creating a, a really detailed map yeah understanding some really high quality imagery maybe even using some of the other modes such as a thermal mode to maybe analyze if there's heat leaking uh yeah. leaving the building or, or any of these sorts of elements it can be used again construction sites you know uh you can send it up each day and understand the development process yeah. if you've got a quarry you can understand the amount of uh material that's been built up left etc etc um even you know just general photography um send them up utilizing doing lots of different photography in the area as well i mean obviously the commercial side can be used for that as well but i i guess the the limits are your own idea of a limitation that's imagination yeah, it is. <laughs> so where would someone go to find out more information about dji uh, so you can head over to midwich yeah uh, or you can head over to the dji enterprise website Okay. Those two two areas, you'll find all the information that you should need. Brilliant. Have a great show. Thank you.